Good morning, everybody. Uh, give every Danny, how are you? And uh, feel better. Thank you. <clears throat> are there any uh, public speakers today? Good morning, Mr. Chair. We have three members of the public registered to speak today. As a reminder, we ask that all public speakers adhere to the MTA's rules of conduct and decorum. I would also like to remind our public speakers that, in the interest of time and fairness to all speakers, we limit everyone to two minutes. Please be aware of the clock in the front of the room and the warning light you will see, reminding you that you have 30 seconds left to conclude your remarks. The first speaker will be Murray Bowden, following will be Charlton D'Souza, followed by Jason Anthony. Good morning, Murray. You're always looking good. Stay healthy. I don't know if Allison remembers me, but that goes way back. No. Uh, I can't see David. Yeah. Danny. Danny's here. I see his picture up there. Yeah. This is for Danny's wife. Because uh, I know Danny listens to his wife, and I haven't been successful in getting anywhere else, so I'm going to put the pressure on Danny the hard way. This is about safety. When we're a driver, and I'm getting older, I'm 89, when a light turns green and we look up from our texting, not me, but other people, you need to see a yellow line on the left and a white line on the right. It's a picture I took up at Thornwell, they just put it there. They got an island in the middle and a white line on the side there. You can't cross the island. New York State DOT has been doing it wrong forever. Mrs. D, tell Danny you want safe roads out there. Tell him on a Henry Hudson Bridge, the yellow line belongs there, not where you go underneath. He won't change it. When you go under the George Washington Bridge, there's a split there. You can't go past the white, the, the, the barrier, the guardrail. Put some pressure on Danny. I know he listens to you. Danny and I get along pretty well. Dave and I get along pretty well. I won't be here much longer. It's getting harder and harder because I'm making mistakes. Mrs. D, we need somebody new here putting the pressure on them because they haven't been listening to me. Help people stay safe. Yes, I know. You can ring it 16 times. Thank you. Please conclude your remarks. Thank you. The next speaker is Charlton D'Souza, followed by Jason Anthony. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Charlton D'Souza, president of uh, Passengers United. And um, first and foremost, um, we need the MT bridges and tunnels and the MT headquarters to extend the congestion pricing public forums. Um, and there needs to be one or two of them in person because a lot of people have not really had a chance to comment on congestion pricing. Um, the way that you guys rolled out the, you know, the online virtual public hearings, they were all done in the last week, the last two or three weeks of August. And unfortunately, a lot of people were on vacation um, and that was a bad time to do that. So you need to really extend it till October, I would say October 15th. And after that, you know, um, y'all should really give out surveys to all the easy pass holders, um, you know, that they could do virtually so that they have a chance to comment. Now, as far as Passengers United right now, I can tell you we are doing a congestion pricing survey of our own. Uh, we've given it out to all of our members and to all the auto drivers and taxi cab drivers who drive um, throughout New York City. I will say this. We're hearing from the yellow taxi cab industry and they want exemptions. And, you know, they've been paying uh, into the congestion pricing program. So, you know, they feel that they need some relief because a lot of them 
you know, uh, through the pandemic. And not only that, but when they lost their medallions uh, and that whole financial situation has to be looked into. Now, all I can tell you is the way the MT is going about congestion pricing, you guys are going to have a very hard time getting this thing passed because right now people are very upset with the way the agency has rolled out this. And we're hearing from a lot of people and a lot of the people who drive cars happen to use the subway and bus. Thank so you. we're going to find out how remarks. our survey rolls out and we will be able, I have 27 seconds, and we will be able to find out what's going to happen coming up because, you know, a lot of people are telling me what's going on with MT management. Why are they rolling out these congestion pricing workshops the last week of August? And if you want something, you cannot expect another state to pay like New Jersey if you're not going to give them money for New Jersey Transit and PATH. Thank you. Good point. Thank you. The next speaker is Jason Anthony. Good morning, <clears throat> good morning, David. Uh, good morning, Danny. Uh, Jason Anthony from Amazon Labor Union. Uh, I have to agree and at the same time disagree with the previous speaker. Um, we should, at the same time, remind ourselves that we have those workers that work overnight, like those at Amazon that couldn't attend none of the congestion pricing um, forms. And they are forced to pay not only the Verrazano Bridge, if they use to buy mail, that is by far the most expensive tolling in the entire country. If they come to Manhattan, they will have to pay the the battery tunnel and if we if we implement congestion pricing they will have to pay that too that'll be by far forty dollars we cannot afford that Danny so Amazon workers they will be literally broke because on average Amazon takes about 24% of taxes of their paychecks every single week. So let's do some math and then come to the table. So I'll see you guys in transit. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That concludes the public comment. Uh, uh, good. <coughs> Uh, I'd like to call for approval of the minutes. Oh, second. Okay. Any questions? Any corrections? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Uh, uh, what? Yeah. Uh, are there any changes in the B? TL <clears throat> committee's work plan? Uh, no changes in the work plan. And if it's okay, I, I'll stop my uh, comments. Okay. Thank you. If, can everyone hear me okay? Oh, yeah. All right, great. Uh, first, I'd just like to start off by saying that uh, my thoughts and prayers and the thoughts and prayers that uh, the MTA, I'm sure, with uh, those in Puerto Rico and family and friends that are here in the region. Um, I just wanted to start off with that. Uh, good morning and welcome to the September 2022 MTA Bridges and Tunnels Committee meeting. Hoping that everyone had a good summer. For this meeting, BNT departments will report on June and July. The diversity report, which appears on page 50 of the BNT committee book, will be delivered later today at the MTA Diversity Committee meeting. The next uh, part of my comments will have a couple of uh, pictures and 
video, so I'll try to go a little slow as I'm not in the room, so make sure we all line up. Um, I would like to start off today's meeting by recognizing a remarkable team effort. So at the Trogsnack Bridge, at the tail end of morning rush hour on Friday, August 26th, the 16 foot long, 37,000 pound concrete slab had become unsecured and fallen off a moving flatbed truck, landing squarely across the Queensbound right lane and part of the center lane, as you can see from this photo. We were gonna bring in the slab, but obviously it's too big to bring into the uh, committee room. <laughs> Facility-based operations sprang into action, setting a perimeter to allow traffic to safely move around the debris. I believe we have in the room today, uh, Mike Barnwell, the director of uh, the Throgs Neck and the Whitestone Bridges and Rosalind Martin, the operations superintendent. If they can um, just stand up and say hello to the committee members. Uh, Rosalind was the, uh, thank you. Rosalind was the manager on site that day and, and she started the ball rolling. She did a great job and everyone jumped in after that. Um, construction and development engineers quickly responded to inspect the roadway and the underside of the bridge for any structural damage. B&T maintenance crews determined that a specialized crane would be required to remove the slab due to its size and weight. C&D enlisted our resident contractor, Judd Lau, which joined the team effort and arranged for the crane to be re required to lift the slab, seen in this short video clip. So traffic remained moderate to heavy, but facility operations coordinated with our regional partners to message our customers. And this joint effort enabled us to clear the roadway prior to the start of the Friday afternoon rush. I commend the Throgsneck Bridge team and all who joined forces across departments and agencies to manage and resolve the incident. That was a great job by everybody. And I'm sorry, I'm not in the room for that one. As we crossed into September, b and prepared for the seasonal shift of post-Labor Day traffic, as well as the return to back to school, the U.S. Open Tennis Tournament, the 9-11 anniversary, the United Nations General Assembly, the Tunnel to Towers Silla Run, and other events during this month that will impact our facilities. Rich Hildebrand will present further details in the operations report, but I wanted to share that we are seeing so far is a more traditional post-Labor Day traffic pattern than we've seen in the past two years. If we could cue to the next picture, great, thank you. Also in September, I'm pleased to have welcomed a new class of Bridget Tunnel maintainers to our team. These 20 employees are currently undergoing a robust six week program of training that will equip, equip them to take up multiple duties handled by our maintenance department. We need them as we are filling critical vacancies and we welcome them and wish them a long successful career at B&T. You could drop the picture now, thank you. And finally, September marks five years since B&T completed the conversion of our seven bridges and two tunnels to open road tolling, or ORT as we call it. Many of us who went through this relatively short peer, period of accelerated and intense work back in 2017, including myself, look back on this achievement with pride and lasting appreciation of the coordination among departments. At the time, engineering, operations, maintenance, tolling, procurement, legal, internal security, plus others, ORT was a dramatic physical change to our facilities and an equal notable change in the way we do business. Five years later, the benefits of ORT remain evident, chiefly safer and more efficient movement of traffic, reduced vehicle emissions, and improved customer experience. I'd like to share a brief time-lapse video from June of 2017, showing this conversion at the RFK Bridge.
Uh, tr truly, truly remarkable. I, re I remember the RFK bridge specifically. I think I looked up that morning at the camera and, and saw a toll plaza and, and like the next day it was a free flowing highway traffic. It was, it was truly unbelievable. And it impacted uh, everything that we do. And I'd have to commend staff, um, again, thanking all the different departments on moving forward with this and, and, and the way it is now. I mean, I know my kid, my children's children, my grandchildren will be saying, what's a toll booth, I'm sure, um, as they grow up. So this concludes my remarks. If there are no questions, I'll throw it over to Vice President and Chief of Operations, Rich Hildebrand, who will now report on operations. We have a few questions, Dan. Commissioner okay. Albert? Yes, uh, thank you. <clears throat> Great report, Danny, and hope you feel better and get, get out of that situation really fast. Thank uh, you. Commissioner Glucksman and I were wondering, did the truck that, from which this huge concrete piece ended up on the Throgsnack Bridge, did he remain on scene? Uh, does he know that uh, he lost this? And, and yeah, uh, Richie has Richie has some details on it. Oh, okay, great. Yes, he, sorry. Yes, he did remain on scene. Um, he he had extensive damage to the back of his cab of his truck. Our motor carrier safety unit responded to the scene as well. Did a full inspection on the vehicle and issued the appropriate law enforcement actions on him. So. He was uh, taken out of service and issued the appropriate summonses. Yeah. Commissioner Glucksman? So the, um, the charges, the expenses, are we going to get paid back for that? That's a, a, we, we do seek restitution, I believe, in, in these cases. Uh, we have our uh, legal counsel, Paul Fryman, with us. Uh, Commissioner, uh, as with all the similar situations, uh, we look into the possibility of requesting the prosecutor's office to seek appropriate restitution. It's a discretionary matter, as you, as you may know, with the prosecutor's office and with the judge who presides over the criminal matter. All right, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Thanks. Okay. Rich? All right. Thank you very much. Uh, and thanks for that look in history, Danny. Those are all um, definitely career timeline defining moments. Good morning, everyone. There are two operations reports in this month's committee materials, which begin on page 14. As the school year came to a close in 2022 and summer moved into full swing, BT traffic continued to see strong traffic counts. June 2022 averaged more than 29,000 additional vehicle trips per day over May of 22 and July 2022 saw more than 24,000 additional crossings per day when compared to the same month last year, July 2021. This leads to BNT reporting traffic counts for 2022 that were stronger in both June and July of last year, as well as above these traffic counts for the months in 2020. Paid vehicle traffic in 2020, uh, June of 2022 was 28.8 million vehicles, which reflects an increase of 3.6% over the 27.8 million crossings in June of 2021 and was 42 point, I'm sorry, 44.2% higher than June of 2020 with 8.8 .8 million more crossings. When compared to June of 2019, when there were 28.8 million paid crossings, a slight increase of 0.2% was recorded for June of 2022. Easy Pass market share was 95% for June of this year, which matches both last year and two years ago. On to July. Paid vehicle traffic for July of 2022 was 28.7 million vehicles, which reflects an increase of 2.4% over the 28 million crossings in July of 2021 and was 23.1% higher than July of 2020, with 5.4 million more crossings. When compared to July of 2019, when there were 28.9 million paid crossings, we saw just a slight decrease of 0.5% recorded this year. Easy Pass market share was 94.6% for July, which also matches both last year and two years ago. And preliminarily, in August of 2022, BNT traffic was 4% higher than in 21 and 19.5% higher than August of 2020. And according to preliminary traffic data, traffic for 2022 was 0.9% lower when compared to that in August of 2019. The continued rise in cost of gasoline did not affect our traffic counts for June of 2022, nor did the subsequent decrease in gas prices appreciably affect our traffic counts for July of 22. Weather conditions did not have an adverse impact on BNT traffic for the months of June and July. 
And as President DiCrescenzo mentioned, operations shifts its focus at the end of every summer, and eyes are now on post-Labor Day traffic and the return to school and work traffic patterns. As we look at daily traffic counts, changing traffic patterns, and rush hour trends, necessary adjustments are being made to our operational posture. Metrics are compared to both summer traffic and pre-pandemic return to school traffic counts. B&T staff remain engaged with the customer experience as our teams routinely drive our bridges and tunnels to observe, record, report, and react to any on or off property traffic changes and incidents. During the first weekend post-Labor Day operations, we are seeing stronger traffic counts when compared with last year's return to school and work. Operations will continue with our internal external partners as we continue to evaluate traffic and adjust accordingly. And with that, that concludes our, our, this month's report on operations, unless there are any questions. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks, Rich. Um, I believe we have Pashko Kamaj in the room for the report on safety. Yes, good morning. Good morning, commissioners. There are two safety reports in this month's committee materials. I will be focusing on July report, which begins on page 51. The July 2022 report maintains performance metrics to be generally positive as traffic continues to align with volumes representing of the pre-pandemic period. BNT safety report highlights include the following. Overall, BNT's July 2022 total collisions rate was 3.92 collisions per million vehicles, which is about 30% better than rolling year 2019-2022, which also represents the beginning of the pandemic period. When compared to last year, results are also slightly better, about 2%. The collisions with injury rate was 0.8%, collisions with uh, per million vehicles, which is same as the rolling year 2019-2020, but also slightly higher than last year, about 20%. Employee safety metrics over the 12-month period are as follows. The employee lost, lost time injury rate was 5.5, which in indicates, I'm sorry, incidents per 200,000 work hours, reflecting a small decrease compared to rolling year 2019-2020, and also 13% decrease compared to last year. Unless there are any questions, this concludes our safety report. Are there any questions? Yes. Uh, so every month we receive these statistics. The Verrazano is the crossing with the largest uh, amount of collisions. Is it speed? Is it design? What is so different about the Verrazano that it's appreciably higher than the others? Well, we've talked about this uh, plenty of times, as you just mentioned, but uh, we, we continue to monitor issues. There are uh, various issues that, that reflect uh, those numbers. Uh, traffic uh, uh, merging into the Belt Parkway has been historically an issue for us. Uh, we are trying to try to, to uh, find out the ways to improve this, this in terms of uh, reducing traffic collisions and tra traffic overall. But I think if you're looking at uh, the effects that ge geographically in the entire area, we're seeing that Belt Parkway merge has had an impact, and we're continuing to, to work with, so, with so, the other so agencies. So most of the uh, accidents are on the on the Brooklyn side, obviously. Yes, I would say I would say so. Um, yeah. yeah, as we've stated, or uh, Pashko or uh, um, Vice President Osnes as well, uh, we, we suffer a bit from off-property delays, backing traffic up onto the span, and then causing a stop-and-go pattern. So as we move traffic more efficiently and better, it kind of feeds more downstream, and then we, we deal with those. We you know we deal with a little bit of those backups. So we, we you know we have an aggressive plan out there for signage enforcement, education, and looking at the engineering benefits or engineering improvements that we can make. And just a follow up. So have you know the that on ramp onto the Verrazano from Belt Parkway? Is that is it an on ramp? It, are you have you been coordinating with DOT, and what has been those discussions like? So the on-ramp is not the main issue coming from the belt to the bridge that generally flows relatively freely, Staten Island bound, backs up a little bit, you know, during, during times of high traffic rush hour. But it's, it's the off-bound, what we call off-bound or Brooklyn bound, right. so the exit to the belt parkway. Okay. You have two lanes from the uh, Leif Erickson, which, which runs along mm -hmm. the shore, and then you have the two lanes from the bridge kind of come down into three lanes, so you have four lanes coming to three on the belt parkway. Well, we are working, to answer your question directly, uh, we are working with our, with our regional partners to improve that area. Okay, and what what are options that can? Uh, just as some reconfiguration. DOT, DOT, DOT um, and I'm sorry, Rich. DOT no, and uh, CND have been working on the uh, vehicles coming off of the Verrazano Bridge, and is a project in place or pro project is going to be started to improve that area. Um, the other the other piece is uh, because we saw accidents on the Brooklyn side during the pandemic. There, there was an accelerated job that extended the Gowanus uh, from the lower level of the Verrazano to 65th Street, providing an extra 
lane of traffic. So all these improvements the last couple of years basically on my wish list for the Verrazano Bridge are actually coming true. So we're trying to improve uh, off property as Richie described it perfectly, that it's really not the bridge. We're moving traffic better than ever before. It's, it's as vehicles come off the bridge. So improving that 65th Street uh, on the Gowanus Lane that, we, that was completed last year. And then now working with DOT to basically fix the the drop off at the on the Bell Parkway to extend that so more vehicles can flow off the Verrazano Bridge. That's going to be uh, two great improvements. But I also have to note that overall traffic collisions are lower uh, than 2019, which at the time you know we had the most traffic uh, ever recorded at uh, you know close to 330 million vehicles. And uh, this year uh, our traffic is right there. So to have the collisions less than we had in 2019. Uh, but obviously we know that the VN is one of the higher facilities, you know, two and a quarter miles, uh, you know, multiple lanes of traffic, uh, entries, egresses, uh, you know, huge challenge, but we're, we're working on looking at those specific areas. Thank you so much, Danny. Yeah, but all, all good points and the commissioners hit on everything that we've been looking at, but Brooklyn mm -hmm. side, you know, Bell Parkway, vehicles exiting the, the facility. So perfect questions and uh, thanks to the team in the room for, uh, jumping in. Right. Thanks, Danny. Uh, are there any other questions regarding the report? Procurements? Uh, uh, there, there are no uh, procurements this month. And if there's no uh, questions, this concludes our report. Okay. Well, I think that concludes us. Uh, uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Motion. All in favor? Okay, thank you all. Thank you, everybody.